the fun thing about letting my patrons choose my next video is sometimes I'm genuinely surprised by the result. So let's talk about the ableism in Cars 2. I've gotten some requests to talk about this movie before, so despite never having touched the series, I decided to throw it on a Patreon poll just in case. Of course, the only series I'm basically entirely unfamiliar with is the one that wins. I'd heard of Cars before this, obviously, but I'd never watched it before, nor did I have anyone in my social circle who was super into it when it came out. Probably because my social circle as a kid was pretty much entirely girls, so even though the first one came out when I was seven, it wasn't exactly marketed to us. The second one came out when I was 12, around the age when kids start trying to insist that they're basically already teenagers and definitely too cool for children's media. So basically, it sailed right past me, despite the fact that I was a kid when it became a success, and therefore technically in their target audience. For this video, I did actually end up watching both the first and second movies, so I'd have some establishing context going into the second. And I'm glad I did, because there is actually a faint whiff of something rotten in the air in the first one, too. At its core, it's of course just a story about Lightning learning not to be a classist prick, and the plight of abandoned towns along Route 66, but there are a couple things I want to highlight in context of what comes next. The first thing being Lightning McQueen's sponsor, Rusty's. It's a product targeted at rusty cars claiming to be able to remove their rust with ease. The idea, I think, is supposed to be something similar to acne cream in our world. However, that quickly falls apart when you actually take a look at the rusty cars themselves. Some of them are actually literally falling apart, making this much less superficial and more like a genuine medical product. Which makes the already questionable morals of Lightning being their spokesperson even worse, because there's actually no indication anywhere that Lightning was ever rusty. In fact, I think it's pretty obvious he wasn't. It's extremely shady, and given we never see any of the rusty cars get any less rusty, I'm almost tempted to call it a downright scam targeting the vulnerable and desperate. But like with any anthropomorphization of non-human things to comment on the lived human experience, the metaphor got mixed. I don't think they intended for the rusty cars to read as disabled. I think their intention was more along the lines of class commentary instead. Regardless of the intention, though, when you see a group of rusty cars, some of which are, again, literally coming apart at the seams, the comparison is as unavoidable as it is uncomfortable. Bringing me to the next thing I want to highlight in this movie, the first appearance in this series of the word lemon. Lizzie, the gal left like 15 years ago. Then why are you bringing him up, you lemon? A real grandma we talked about this kind of moment. Lemon is actually a real term for cars that have some manner of severe flaw or manufacturing issue, usually making them either unsafe or just unable or ineffective at doing what they were made to. Naturally, they run up against safety laws and regulations, models get discontinued, so on and so forth. However, that's in our world, where cars are just objects and not people. So let's talk about Cars 2. First things first, the term used for, I guess I'll call them dysfunctional cars. I would call them decrepit, since that's another actual term, but many of them aren't actually decrepit, they're just prone to malfunctioning. Anyway, the term used most widely is lemon. It's also 
canonically a slur. So that's a choice. <laughs> that sure is a choice that they made. All your favorite car heroes are using an ableist slur in their everyday language. <laughs> but let's wind it back and start at the beginning of Cars 2. Or rather, the beginning after the very jarring shift to spy thriller that this movie opens with. This is where we're introduced to Otis, a new character who will only show up right here at the beginning and extremely briefly at the end. He is our first dysfunctional car, a resident of Radiator Springs who we did not meet in the last movie. He's broken down on the side of the road, requiring Mater's help to tow him back to Ramon for repairs. His entire existence is to introduce us to the concept of dysfunctional cars. He sings Mater's praises to the high heavens as the only car who respects lemons like him, only to seconds later get painfully scraped along the road when Mater gets distracted by the fact that Lightning's back in town. I guess this is supposed to be funny, but given that Mater is transporting an injured person to receive what is essentially medical care in a world that seemingly runs entirely on the US American model of healthcare and is potentially causing further injuries resulting in more bills for this poor guy, I'm gonna say it really isn't funny. <laughs> Honestly, whenever a bit involves someone being accidentally injured by someone else's carelessness, and the injured party tries to bring attention to their pain, only to be ignored, that's just something I can't laugh at. It's too close to home, I guess. Mater's also not the only resident of Radiator Springs who respects Otis, something which is proven when Otis slides into Ramon's shop and the two start up a pleasant conversation, where Ramon congratulates him for getting further out of town than usual before breaking down. Otis's fawning speech exists purely and only to introduce us to the fact that dysfunctional cars exist. He praises Mater for the simple act of doing his job while in the same breath putting himself down using this universe's version of an ableist slur. It's just a goddamn mess, and it's not about to get any better anytime soon. Mater doesn't even actually respect dysfunctional cars. He's nice to Otis because cars like him are, and I quote, a tow truck's bread and butter. When faced with other dysfunctional cars in this movie, Mater is quick to give unasked for and unwanted commentary on how often they break down, laugh about the state of their engines, and curse them out using what is, again, canonically a slur. Sure, the cars in question are villains, but that doesn't make it okay. Also, he doesn't even know they're villains yet when he makes the comments about how often they break down, that's just his reaction to seeing a model of car he recognizes as dysfunctional. Kind of like how some people can't keep their thoughts to themselves when they see disabled people just living our lives. Mater doesn't respect anyone, honestly. I know the end goal of this movie was for Lightning to accept him as he is, but I think he'd do well to experience some character growth, actually. He's the archetypical example of the loud, obnoxious American tourist who does not respect the culture they're visiting or the people they're interacting with. But that's not the point of this video. The plot of Cars 2 revolves around All in All, a supposed new green fuel invented by Sir Miles Axelrod, who's hosting the World Grand Prix, as a promotional event and practical demonstration of his fuel's capabilities. Of course, the grand plot twist here is that Axelrod, the former oil tycoon, is actually not a former oil tycoon at all, and all of this is a false flag operation to make green fuel look bad. All in all isn't even green fuel, it's just gasoline that he's messed with to make it explode when subjected to an EMP. As far as plots go, that's not bad that has legs. 
Big Oil pumping a ridiculous amount of resources into discounting and slandering green alternatives is something that actually happens in reality. But, of course, they couldn't leave it there. That would seem too critical of, well, the actual big oil companies. They have to add a layer of distraction. Enter the dysfunctional cars. Because it turns out all of the people helping Axelrod with this plot, as well as Axelrod himself, they are all dysfunctional cars. As I mentioned earlier, in our world, lemons being discontinued or recalled isn't a bad thing. I'd argue it's actually a good thing as it takes potential hazards off the road. However, the world of cars is not our world. These lemons are sentient beings with all of the rights that that implies. Things like forcing a halt to their manufacturing and discontinuing the replacement parts they need, forcing them to turn to the black market, it, uh, well, it sounds a bit like eugenics when I put it like that, doesn't it? Their anger and concerns are all extremely valid. They want to be able to access the things they need to remain alive without breaking the law, not be called slurs, and potentially even just have children? I don't know how kids work in the Cars universe, but the mention of forcible shutdowns of certain kinds of cars being manufactured doesn't sound great from that angle, does it? The movie also makes the fact that one of the crime bosses has hired a tow truck to tow him around everywhere seem like a lazy, arrogant display of wealth instead of someone who is prone to breaking down, hiring a private chauffeur, essentially, because he has the means to do so and it makes his life easier. Instead of questioning why only the richest cars around would ever be able to afford this kind of service, which obviously makes the world far more accessible. The fact that Cars 2 expects me not to sympathize with the villains is actually incredible. I felt horrible all through the last act because I knew exactly the kind of ending that was waiting for me. They have genuine grievances with society that affect even them, the uber-wealthy. So what about cars like Otis? The vast majority of dysfunctional cars who aren't part of a secret crime family of disabled people looking to take over the world. They all still suffer with these exact same problems at the end of the film. Nothing has gotten better. In fact, things have probably gotten worse for them now that Axelrod and his collaborators have been exposed. The bad guys in this movie are a Bond-style syndicate of embittered disabled villains lashing out at the society that hurt them. As is the case with almost every villain who falls into this trope, the movie feels justified in ignoring all of their legitimate grievances because they're the villains. We're justified in returning to the status quo, because everyone who complained about it was evil. The only good dysfunctional car in this movie is willing to cheerfully suffer expensive substandard medical care and live among people who throw around ableist slurs at the drop of a hat and never complain because that would make him bothersome. Otis, with his rusted frame and frequent probably costly visits to the mechanic, is a more honest depiction of the majority of disabled people than the shiny Bond villains that comprise the rest of his fellows. Being disabled is expensive. Benefits are a hellish battle of bureaucracy that you don't always win even if you have the energy to fight it, and getting a job ranges from impossible to just really goddamn hard. If you do get a job, depending on where you live, that's not even a guarantee that your life will get better, because your employer could potentially legally pay you sub-minimum wage. And this should go without saying, but we're not all part of a secret union of crime families plotting to take over the world. 
Honestly, Cars 2 can go jump in a lake. I knew it wasn't going to be great going in, but I didn't expect the sheer amount of garbage I discovered. And if you think I'm taking it too seriously, that it's just a kid's movie, and why am I making this video, and yada yada yada, I find that argument against criticism of the themes and implications found, especially in children's media, to be incredibly disingenuous, because children are our future, and they absorb the messages we give them when they're young. So, I find it actually extremely necessary to sometimes look at the media we're feeding them, and the potential messages we might be sending through it. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, consider liking it and maybe subscribing. I will be back here Thursday after next. Bye.